All right, so I have to say that we just had one of the most candid and real interviews we will ever have from Phil Spencer and Xbox. This is coming hot off of the tails of Redfall and how it's become a 57 Metacritic game. Now, I know a lot of people are thinking this is going to be doom and gloom and attacking everything, but honestly, I just want to give positive criticism to Xbox, but also give criticism to a lot of people are taking what Phil Spencer is saying and twisting it into a negative way. In reality, there needs to be things that need to change, and in reality... Phil Spencer coming out and talking is a way that Xbox is showing that they understand that things need to get better and maybe, just maybe, it might start happening. So let's get into everything that was said because there's a lot to talk about here and I have to say this is one of the best interviews I've ever seen from Phil Spencer but also it comes at a time that isn't that great. So let's get into it. All right, so you know the drill. If you like the content, hit that subscribe button and that like button. And if you want to be notified on future videos, hit that small little bell icon. And if you want to go the extra mile to support the channel, hit that join button. All the support is greatly appreciated. All right, so we all know who Phil Spencer is. We all seen him do a bunch of interviews. And to be quite honest with you, I'm almost a little sick of them. I know that sounds kind of weird to say because everybody loves when the executives come out and they're transparent and everything is all great. But in this stance, I do need to say that if Redfall is going to be dropping at a 50 and a couple other games have come out with lackluster, then you got the ABK deal getting blocked by the CMA. There's a lot of negativity surrounding Xbox right now. And trust me, I'm one of the people that have been criticizing them across the board, but not in a way that heads should roll and everybody should get fired. It's more in a way of, hey, let's start regrouping. Let's start getting Microsoft back on track to make Xbox the company that we know it can be, which is bringing out high quality games and things that people need to understand is something that they've been doing for quite some time now. Now, I'm not saying all the games they bring out are bangers. I'm saying some of the games they bring out are great and others not so great. What is missing here, the ingredient, is consistency. And that is the part that is hard to hear, is that Phil Spencer, when he was having this interview on Kind of Funny Games, which I have to say is awesome, he is kind of admitting that there really isn't a solution or a win for the company when it comes to consoles. And that's where a lot of the vocal people come out on social media, is the console gamer. The people that are foundational to what Xbox is as a company and as a brand. And so let's get into what this article has to say and also what Phil Spencer had to say. Because of this and languishing in third place, Microsoft decided instead of fighting a console war, it would instead focus on the cloud and subscription services like Game Pass with its new generation of consoles. The truth of the matter is, when you're third place in the console marketplace and the top two players are as strong as they are and have a certain cases, a very discreet focus on doing deals and other things that kind of make being Xbox hard for us as a team, that's on us, not anybody else, said Spencer. While Microsoft is focused on creating great gaming experiences for Xbox users, Spencer said the company is aware it cannot win against Nintendo or Sony with conventional console strategies. I see it out there. I see the commentary that if you just build great games, everything would turn around, he said. It's just not true that if we go off and build great games, suddenly you're going to see console shares shift in some dramatic way. We lost the worst generation to lose in the Xbox One generation, where everybody built their digital library of games. This idea that if we just focus more on great games on our console, that somehow we're going to win the console race, I think doesn't relate to the reality of most people. Now, I have to say that I 100% agree with this. This is something I've been saying for a very long time. And to be honest, I think people need to hear this harsh reality, is that Xbox isn't going to win the console race. The only time that they did win it and then actually lost it towards the end of it was the Xbox 360 era, where the PS3 sold more at the end of the gen. Because PlayStation as a whole is just a global brand for gaming. When people think of PlayStation, they think of gaming. And when they think of gaming, they think of PlayStation in certain countries and a lot of countries and a lot of territories that Microsoft and Xbox are just not a part of. And when you take all of that and mix it in together and you see the consistency of the games that they had, especially after the Xbox One generation, where Xbox basically shot themselves in the foot repeatedly, that is going to change the dynamic of what the console market is going to look like. But yes, there are times where you can shift and maybe reimagine yourself. When you think of Nintendo and the Wii U, it wasn't that great, it wasn't that big of a success. But the Switch is one of the most successful consoles in history, and they turned it around because of one thing, which is brand recognition and, of course, 
massive AAA games that came out like Breath of the Wild and all the other games they make on that platform, which apparently their fan base is massively supporting. That's something that Xbox just doesn't have right now. They haven't brought out a lot of their big AAA games that have flocked people to the console or even made people come to them during the PC market on the Xbox store. There's a lot of changes that needs to happen, yet what Phil Spencer is saying here is true. The console market is kind of is what it is. When you walk into a store, you're going to buy a console that you want to play with or where your friends are going to be or where your digital library is going to be. The Xbox One generation was one of the worst generations to lose because of that digital library of games that was built. Now, that is something I have said since 2018, if not 2019, back in the day where I said this was the worst console generation to lose because of that digital market. But when you throw in back compat and you throw in a lot of things that Xbox has brought, they try to get some of those people to come over to the the Xbox console because hey that's the strategy they needed to do but overall what their main strategy was is breaking away from the console breaking away from traditional types of business and making it change kind of like what Nintendo did they took the switch and changed it they made it mobile they made it where it wasn't the most powerful console out there but it had great games and it was very well made for people to walk around with because they saw the market and they saw mobile gaming exploding in multiple territories which worked out for them but I want to get back into the article and talk about what the console means. While the console is the core of the Xbox segment of the company, Spencer said that sometimes its competitors make it hard on the console team as a whole. We're not in the business of out consoling Sony or out consoling Nintendo. There isn't really a great solution or win for us. But I know some people want to hold us up as being a better green version of what the blue guy does. And I'm just going to say there's not a win for Xbox in staying in the wake of somebody else. We have to go off and do our own thing with Game Pass, with the stuff we do with xCloud, and the way we build our games. All that said, Spencer does seem optimistic regarding devices that consumers can use to play purchase games across various devices such as consoles, PC, and handhelds like Steam Deck. While that's wonderful, Spencer said to not expect Microsoft to forego the console market to focus entirely on streaming. And that is something I think people need to take and really understand that, yeah, Xbox is not going to out console Sony and Nintendo because that is the only platform they have. Sony and Nintendo, all they care about is the console and getting you on there, especially Sony. I mean, we've seen the numbers, we've seen the CMA, we've seen everything become public. Basically, Sony is funding all of their first party games from third party revenue. That's right, like Call of Duty is funding their first party games. So all the games they make are profitable to some extent, but not nearly and not even close to the profits they make from third-party games. So, of course, Sony's going to have a stringent strategy of protecting the console, while Xbox understands that they can grow beyond that because they can't beat Sony at their own game because Sony's been playing it longer, has a much bigger fan base across the globe, and Xbox just understands why even do that when we can use the resources that we have within Microsoft to expand what we're doing. That's the whole point of this. That's what people are not understanding. It's not that he's abandoning consoles. It's not that Phil's walking away from the console. He's just saying, hey, we need to do something different. And while I understand that they need to do something different, what they most need to do is make great games so people can respect the Xbox brand more. That is the whole point of this. That's what I am trying to say, is that they need to start focusing on games. And while he does say that big games aren't gonna change the console market, it does not mean it won't change the market across other platforms and Xbox as a whole. This is what is said in the article. This is especially true since 90% of those who buy consoles are in the camp they prefer, whether that be Nintendo, PlayStation, or Xbox. Plus, it's not cost-effective for consumers to purchase a console that will not allow them to carry older games forward to the newer generation. This is the first generation where the big games they're playing are games that were available last gen when you think about Fortnite, Roblox, and Minecraft, said Spencer. The continuity from generation to generation is so strong. I see a lot of pundits out there that want to go back to a time when we all had cartridges and discs and every new generation was a clean slate and you could switch the whole console share. That's just not the world that we're in today. There is no world where Starfield is in an 11 out of 10 and people are selling their PS5s. That's not going to happen. I fully agree with this. I think that people that want to play on PlayStation are going to play on PlayStation. People that go to buy Xbox consoles are going to play on Xbox because where their friends are and that's the ecosystem they enjoy. Now, do I think big games can change that to some extent? 
Yes, I think about 10%, maybe less of the market, actually cares about first party exclusive games. I know that sounds kind of weird to say, but when you look at the sales numbers for exclusive games, they're not in the 50 to 60 to 70 million range. They're in the 10 to 20 million range. Now, of course, there's other games like Sea of Thieves and Spider-Man that blow up past 30 million. And I say those are console pushers and platform pushers, but they are so few and far between that that's just what's going to happen is that people that play Starfield are going to play it on the console or they're gonna go play it on the PC or on cloud. It doesn't matter because that's not what's going to change consoles. People know where they wanna play and they're gonna to stick to that platform. It's true, 90% of console gamers are gonna to stick to the platform that they love. And the people that join new aren't that big. I've always said that the console market isn't the biggest market in gaming and it's just not. I mean, look at how many consoles sell every time, about 120 to 130 million PS4s, and you look at even the Switches at that number. That is a lot of consoles, but at the end of the day, it's not a big market of gaming. I mean, that's how many active users are on Steam, and then that doesn't even count how many people play on the mobile market. There's so much more to expand upon that the console market is a fraction of what everybody else is playing. Now, is it a big fraction and Xbox needs that money to reach that 3 billion or 1 billion gamers? Yes, of course but it's not going to change the sales numbers that Xbox understands is their core audience, which to me is about 50 to 60 million. And that doesn't even include the people that double buy consoles. I have two or three Xbox consoles in my home alone. I know people that have multiple PlayStation consoles. So when you look at the 120 to 130 million, it's a lot of double buying. So for me, the console market is about 100 million users, if not 120 million. I know they say it's about 250 million, but I don't buy that. I think it's far less than that, if not half, if not more than half of that. But overall, I do agree with what Phil Spencer says. The console market isn't going to change. It's not going to change if Starfield is the greatest game ever made. People are going to just go play it on PC and they're going to be on multiple platforms. Xbox can't just focus on the console because that's not what they're trying to do. They're trying to play a different game. They're trying to change gaming. And I fully respect it. Now, as a person that's played games on PC his entire life and on the console, I love the connectivity. I've always said that. I love that consoles connect. So I do agree with what Phil Spencer's trying to do. I love what Phil Spencer's trying to do. And this is why I'm an Xbox fan because of the games they make and the platform they provide me. That's the biggest thing is that I can play anywhere. Sony does that. I would love buying their games on PC and playing them day one there without a doubt. And yet I'm still playing them on the console because that's where I need to play them. But I'm not going there day and date buying games and going crazy because I kind of just wait for them to come on PC. Some games like God of War, of course I'll play. But other games, I can wait for them to come on the PC where the platform I prefer to play on. And that's what Xbox is doing. They're making them go everywhere. They're not going to change console sales unless they take everything away from PC, mobile, and just focus on the console. But that's not the business they're in because when they try to play that business, they lost and lost embarrassingly to PlayStation. So what do you think about all this? Do you agree with what Phil Spencer said? Do you think that making big games is going to change the console market share? Or do you think people are gonna play where they wanna play and the console market is kinda at 90 to 95% of where it's going to be, AKA the platform you prefer? Or do you think Phil Spencer is kinda admitting defeat and kinda walking back on a lot of things he said and that PC and consoles and all that is in a hierarchy where mobile's number one, PC's number two, and console is number three. Let me know what you think down below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please hit that subscribe button and that like button to support us off the channel more than you know. And give me a follow on Twitter at Zalker87. I'm always on there talking games and sharing my latest videos. Plus, I love interacting with everyone there. So get on Twitter and let's talk about gaming. Also, follow me on Xbox Live. My gamer tag is Zalker87, just like my channel name. See what games I'm playing and let's compete in achievements for the month. Okay, so there is something I want to announce for the channel. I am going to be starting a podcast. I know, kind of crazy. But I'm in the preliminary stages of it. I got the panel all picked out. We're all ready to go. But now I'm starting to get a little things like all the graphics ready and everything like that. So I just want to say that I didn't want to put this at the beginning of the video because I wanted to give it to the people that stay till the end to know that there is a podcast coming on my channel. I'm really looking forward to it. It's just something I've been wanting to do for a little while now. And honestly, I always said that I wasn't going to do a podcast unless I found people I truly enjoy talking to and hanging out with. And that's exactly what RDX is 
is to me is I love those guys. I hang out with them. They're actual friends of mine. It's not just like, oh, let's get in a podcast and talk. It's more that they're my brothers. And that's exactly what I wanted to do with this podcast is get people that I genuinely play games with, genuinely get in Xbox parties with and talk to constantly. And I know them. And that's what this is going to be. It's going to be a few of us getting together every week, talking games, talking everything. And honestly, going to kind of go about everything because I have a new job now and I can't make as many videos as I want because of the time restraints. So this podcast is going to help me get even more of the information out there that I want to get out because I love doing that and I love talking. Plus, it helps me interact with you guys a lot more. So look out for that. More announcements coming soon. And in the next few weeks, in the next couple of weeks, you're going to see the podcast start and I hope you guys can join us. And if not, hey, you can watch it after. So let me know any feedback that you have in the chat and anything like that you can even message me on twitter my dms are open any ideas you have or whatever you need i want this to be community driven and also panel driven so thank you so much for watching and i really do appreciate it but now go down below and let me know what you're playing also i want to know what games you're playing i've been playing a lot of god of war ragnarok and some redfall which i'm enjoying yep i know that's kind of weird so let me know what you're playing down below and that's all for now thanks for watching and until next time remember enjoy your gaming later mm -hmm.